I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA 5-Minute Practice Exam. As always, with all the practice exams in this series, we're going to go through five questions pretty rapidly, and we've got one discussion question in here as well, so we might go a little over the 5-minute mark, but do feel free to pause the video for a moment and think about your answer. And also, as always, at the end of the video, I'll be giving you all the answers and explanations and illustrating them on live Cisco routers and switches whenever that is possible. So let's head to question one. At what layer of the OSI model should your troubleshooting procedures generally begin? Very important to have your own troubleshooting methods, but there's one particular layer where you really should start. Cl question two, a client calls you in a panic, because of course that's how clients tend to call us, and he's telling us that one of his routers was reloaded and it came up with something asking about an initial dialogue and presenting him with a yes-no choice. Now that's not a lot to go on, but we all know, especially if you're doing this on telephone work, that a client is not always going to give you every detail you need. Now you do know, though, that the configuration was not erased before reloading. Your client is sure of that. What value should you have that client check next? That's kind of pointing toward one specific value to check. And also, we better know what command we need the client to run or check to get that desired information. And that's a real-life troubleshooting scenario. Question four, you're troubleshooting frame relay, and you run the frame debug LMI command, and you notice that messages are going out but not coming in. Which one of these four choices on the board, and I'm feeling generous today, so I've got some multiple choice in here for you as well. Which one of these four choices best describes the situation? And we'll see this live in a moment, and I want to invite you out to those CCNA webinars and CCNP webinars I'm running. They're absolutely free. You don't need a credit card, don't need a microphone, and we will be looking at commands just like that during the Frame Relay webinar. I'll show you that URL again before we're done here. Question five, which of these four values does not have to match between potential EIGRP neighbors? Which of those do not have to match? Bring up that URL again. It's out at the bryantadvantage.com slash ccnawebinars.htm. Don't be fooled by the URL. We're also going to have NP webinars, security, wireless voice, Network Plus 2009. A lot of great stuff coming up. But definitely uh, a frame relay webinar I run once or twice a month is very popular. So head out there, check the schedule, and there's a time zone for everyone out there because uh, I run them at all times of the day. So question one, at which OSI layer should your troubleshooting procedures begin? Really, you should start that at the physical layer of the OSI model. You're going to develop your own procedures and habits as your career progresses, but especially if you're doing telephone work, believe me, you want to make sure that whatever you're troubleshooting over the phone with somebody who may not be as technically savvy as you and I, uh, make sure they have everything on before you're trying to troubleshoot it. And in this particular situation that I described, this is pointing toward the configuration register. Because what can happen is you can perform a password recovery, or someone else could, and they get everything done, but that involves really changing the config register twice. You're changing it once to ignore NVRAM contents, and then at the very end of the procedure, you should change it back to not ignore the NVRAM and then reload it again. But that step gets left out by some people. So what happens is the config register is left at a value that will ignore the non-volatile RAM as it boots. And that's what happened here because when you get prompted to go into setup mode, either the config was erased and we were told that did not happen, or the config register is set to ignore NVRAM. And we better know where to get that information. Let me bring up a pod here, and it is show version and there's a little tiny gotcha here at the end I just want to point out because occasionally I do hear from a student that says, I've been looking through all this, you know, system return to ROM by reload, system image file, etc., but I don't see the config register. Notice the word more at the very bottom of this output. That means hit the space bar because there's more to see. And you can see here the config register value is at the very bottom of the screen. Let's head to question four in that multiple choice question. We ran frame debug LMI and saw that messages are going out but not coming in. That is indicative of an LMI mismatch. And let me show you what it looks like when it's running correctly. 
and you'll just have to take my word that we do have frame really up and running correctly on this router and some others. In just a few seconds we ought to get a little debug information. And if you've got home lab equipment to practice with on your exams, you really need to run as many of these as possible because it's good to know what things look like with a debug while they're working so when they're not working you know what you're trying to accomplish. And here you'll notice that we do have LMI going out and then we see an LMI coming in. If there's an LMI mismatch what you'll see is serial zero out in this particular case but you wouldn't see anything coming in. Very important debug there and again I invite you out to our frame relay webinars where we take a, lot, a look at a lot of those debug and show commands. And then finally, which of these do not have to match between potential EIGRP neighbors? Going from top to bottom, the AS number has to match. The metric weights have to match. There is no process number. That's with OSPF. And the router ID value, we don't really work with that with EIGRP as much as we do with OSPF in the CCNA curriculum. There is an EIGRP router ID, but it's not going to match between two routers. So for those EIGRP adjacencies to form, the AS number and the metric weights have to be agreed on. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to take this particular practice exam. Anytime you've got five minutes, I've got a practice exam ready for you on YouTube, file sharing sites across the internet, and the blog, and of course the website, thebryantadvantage.com, where I'll see you at our free webinars. Again, thanks for watching. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.